So welcome to today's session on decoding digital technologies. This webinar is part of a series of celebrating the launch of our computer science education research groups online courses, uh, and they're there for educators. We'd like to thank Google Australia for funding our courses. So we're able to do these updates and uh, we'll be conducting these webinar series each month. My name is Sue Carter and with me today is Celia Koffer and we're both STEM project officers working on the CESA STEM professional learning team. In 2016, CESA's created their first digital technologies course and it was based on the first version of the digital technologies curriculum. That was version seven back then. And with new, this new version, uh, version nine of the Australian curriculum, which has been released and adopted from 2023, it's time for us to update and reflect on the changes to the curriculum uh, and also changes to technology that's become available both in the classroom as well as in our wider community. So we have lots of new concepts out there. And so today we're going to look at how we might decode this new digital technologies curriculum. We'd love it if you could introduce yourself and let us know where you're joining uh, from today. Uh, if you could pop that into the chat, that would be fantastic. And meanwhile, um, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we're meeting on today. And this picture is the Corona Learning Circle. Uh, it's at the entrance of the University of Adelaide uh, near the River Torrens. The Wongu poles embody the traditional ritual knowledge of the Corona people. And we acknowledge and pay our respects to these people and the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands the university is situated on. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of these people to the country, and we respect and value their past, the present, and their ongoing connection to the land and cultural beliefs. I'm joining you today from Darwin, and I'm on the Larrakia land, uh, and the peoples here who have a very strong connection to the land, the sea, and the skies. And I'm joining you today from uh, the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation based in Melbourne, Victoria. So in this short session today, we're going to explore these topics of decoding this version nine digital technology curriculum. And we're going to examine the things that have changed and we're going to provide you with an overview of our refreshed digital technologies course for primary teachers. We'll just make a point now that um, today, obviously, in 30 minutes, we're not planning on educating or covering every aspect of those things. We're really just making sure that you know where you will find that information in our online courses and highlighting a few of the, the major differences. So today we are surrounded by technology. It has become part of our everyday life. We've got smart TVs, we've got smart watches and phones, we wear fitness trackers, even refrigerators now are somehow connected to technology. It's all around us. The devices, the systems, the tools, um, you know, they process and they store data. Uh, it includes hardware and software. And they're just becoming so increasingly important in all our lives that it's part of our day-to-day -day life to function in society. Have you stopped to think about the technology that you've interacted with today? And I'm talking about this in terms of beyond a phone and beyond a computer. The tech is everywhere. And since the first version of our digital technologies curriculum was written, it was back in 2014, I believe, uh, we've just come ahead in leaps and bounds in the last 10 years. Um, and words like artificial intelligence uh, have, have appeared. Um, the highly specialised computer specialists, um, certainly not in the hands of our students. And we use technology without really thinking about it. Data is intrinsic to technology, and we share and use data in so many online activities and transactions. So version nine of our curriculum provides these updates that reflect those changes by continuing to focus on concepts of in particular thinking skills uh, and continues to future-proof the content for years to come. So what are these changes? 
It's important to understand how the digital technologies um, uh, subject, not the learning area, it's a subject within the learning area of technologies, and look at how much it has changed. Look, we've still got these two strands of knowledge and understanding and processes and production skills. That hasn't changed, but they're still very interrelated. But one thing you will notice that we've highlighted in orange here is this new strand or substrand called privacy and security. We've got new content descriptions um, that have been introduced in Foundation to Year 10 addressing these privacy and security concepts. So privacy is referring to the right to control how our digital systems can collect, use and share our personal information. Whereas the security side refers to protecting the digital systems and the data from unauthorised access, damage or even theft. And I'm sure we're all aware that there are many scams out there today trying to steal our information. So there are a number of changes in the Australian curriculum from version 8.4 to version 9 of our digital technologies. And basically, the overall organisation of the content has been tidied up and, and um, refined. What they've done is they've separated the foundation level out. So it was originally F to 2. Now foundation has its own content descriptions and then years one and two have their set of content descriptions. And that's so we can provide some clarity around what we expect at those different year levels. As I just said, we've got this new substrand of privacy and security, and it's kind of revised uh, along with digital literacy continuum as well. There has been a splitting and a rewriting of some of the content descriptions, and that's been done to clarify their intent. And what we want to be able to do is help teachers to better understand what to expect and what to teach uh, in this what is really relatively new subject. We've removed the duplicated content, um, and particularly I'm looking at data, where collection interpretation uh, content descriptions are now addressed in the mathematics F to six part of the curriculum. And there is this shared focus on data between these two areas. And of course, we've refined and restructured the band level description so we can provide some clarity on things like computational thinking, the design and systems thinking, and relate the content to what looks like for students in the classroom. And in particular, this new focus of user stories, which kicks in at year three. So as part of the CESAR professional learning team, what we've got available for teachers um, for their own professional learning uh, and to assist them with teaching against the Australian curriculum, we have just relaunched this decoding digital technologies. It was, um, Technologies Foundation for primary years, uh, but a lot of the content has been refreshed, renewed and updated. Just keep in mind, we also have um, a course called Digital Technologies Plus X, and Plus X means another learning area. It could be science, it could be maths. Uh, we could look at it with sustainability as well. That is available, uh, and we'd encourage you to maybe take a look at that one as well. Coming soon will be our AI in the classroom. And we also have cybersecurity and awareness courses. And just on a, another part of it for professional learning is the Maths in Schools uh, project. And there are courses uh, for F to two, three to six and seven to 10. So now what I think we'll do is take a look at our um, course live rather than me flipping through a whole lot of pictures and a PowerPoint. So I'm just gonna change over, uh, stop sharing my screen and take you live into our course. Yes. That's why Sue does that, just a reminder that all, all our um, projects are fully funded. Um, so they are free of charge to all teachers. And we would highly recommend you um, becoming a team in your school and doing the courses together. Um, because that way you get to um, feed off each other's enthusiasm as well as um, prior knowledge and new learning. So um, it's a great way to um, conduct the courses. All right. Does that look okay, Celia? Perfect. All right. So 
Uh, I'm in our course right now on our homepage, and I just want to draw your attention to these two parts here um, of home and modules. When I'm on the homepage, I'm at this welcome page where it gives me a little bit of an overview of our course structure. And what we do have is a pre-survey. And we, uh, you can't actually access any other part of the course until you filled in the pre-survey, which is 17 questions. And it's more just a demographic picture uh, of people and different states and territories that they've come from and their intent and what they would like out of the course. Then you'll notice that we have four units, the introducing of digital tech, a focus on data, a focus on digital systems, and then designing digital solutions. And we bring the thinking models into that as well. And then there's a community hive. So you're able to communicate uh, with others in the course and read their ideas as well. And then we finish up with a post survey. If you wanna have a look at what the modules are and you click on the modules tab to the side there, what you'll then see is the different parts of each module. And that's what we're gonna go through today. So we're gonna start with the introducing digital technologies and I'm going to look at the introduction first, just to show you that we've got some information and some videos in there, and we've got some uh, careers things that you can access as well. And our- Sorry, you'll see that no page has a lot of too much text on it. Um, so hopefully uh, they'll be fairly easy to navigate. And we apologise if whilst we scroll through fairly quickly, um, that if your eyes get <laughs> a bit jittery, but um, it's about the only way to show you um, a fair amount of the course in this amount of time. And I'm just taking you to this course information page just to highlight that you can receive a certificate for the completion of seven hours of professional learning if you work through the course. And in order to uh, get that certificate, there are tasks at the end of each module for you to complete. And that's putting some information into the community hive. I'd also encourage you to just take note that these arrows here, when you click on them, there's some information below there. And that's really important when we come to the classroom activity section as well. All right, I'm gonna go back to the modules page. And we're going to take a look at digital technologies, the curriculum version nine. So through here, we've got some videos and some information. And again, just explaining what has changed in the curriculum. As I just explained uh, in the first part, we're looking at the different parts of the curriculum and to really highlight to you the important aspects. And in particular, these thinking skills the computational thinking, systems thinking and design thinking should always be at the forefront of your mind as you're going through the, uh, the teaching. And again, what you'll see here is more information with each of these arrows that you can scroll through and uh, find out more what it means and what it looks like for teaching in your classroom. I'll move on to uh, data and show you that there's a part on what is data and data representation. And Joy, remember yesterday I had a little bit about data representation in our maths um, uh, webinar. And here, this one's talking about things such as binary and how we're introducing binary and what binary actually means, how we count in binary and testing skills. And we put a few examples in there and classroom ideas. Now what's really important is that at the foundation level, we have content descriptions for this area. And so we've given you some ideas of what you could do with your students and some links uh, to other things. Most importantly, this is what it links to in the digital technologies curriculum. And there's your code for version nine of the curriculum, as well as what, how this links to general capabilities and even our cross-curriculum priorities where we tried to bring our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders histories and cultures into a lot of what we're teaching as well. And so therefore the same exists for year one where you can look at data and sound and we even give you some examples from picture books uh, that can support your teaching. And then again in year three and four and then some more examples for years five and six. 
So they're not intended as lesson plans in any way or, or form. They're literally just ideas um, with suggested um, links to resources which will help expand that. And then in the Digital Technologies Hub, uh, we also have these great sheets from foundation through to year six that explain a little bit more about data representation. The next one is all around acquiring, analyzing and visualizing data. And the reason I'm bringing this to your attention today is because this is the shared focus where you'll find the content descriptions actually in maths rather than in digital technologies for the primary years. So it's really important that we're connecting with statistics of mathematics in our teaching of digital technologies. The content descriptions in this area kick in from years seven to 10. And then the last part of the module is your task. And so we ask you to consider a task um, and it could be option one, classroom data visualization, or option two, resource sharing, or option three, maybe a professional development activity. And then what you do is you write those down the bottom here in the write a reply. So the other people's replies become uh, just as valuable as the other material in the course because when other teachers share their ideas, who doesn't want to have a look at what other ideas are that another teacher presents? So our, our communities have been one of the highlights of our courses and they continue to be a big focus. And then we've got digital systems and I'm going to go straight into the privacy and security section because this is definitely new information for us all to consider. And so we've got some ideas here to share with your students about what is private information and what is public information and helping our students to actually understand what information is, what data is and what is good to share and not share. And this is about keeping um, our students safe but also them learning about how to keep their information safe. So we go through a few examples here on what sort of things, and there's a little thing for you to try. What do you think is personal and uh, personal information? We go into digital footprint and identity, and we have some resources that are also available on YouTube that you can take a look at. And we also encourage you to look at the things on the eSafety Commissioner's website as well, such as Be Deadly Online. We then go into the behaviours and about um, the best way that we can behave, particularly with what we refer to as past phrases. We've often talked about passwords, and passwords are starting to become easier to decipher. And so now we're encouraging people to maybe look at something a little bit more complex that might be a passphrase. And you probably experienced uh, two or multi-factor authentication where just typing in a password or phrase isn't enough and therefore you need to then verify against um, a, an app system that might have numbers uh, or against a text message or even against some um, questions that you need to answer. Then we get down to the classroom ideas for privacy and security. And you'll notice again, we have them from foundation through to year six, because each of these levels do have uh, content descriptions attached to them. And so we've given you some ideas of what you can do along with some um, downloadable resources. So here you can get a PDF version of these data cards that we've created. And of course, everything is connected back to digital technologies. We've included the maths connections there, as well as general capabilities. Then if you open up, you can be specific about what you'd like to look at for the year one, two students. And we've given you some further resources within the eSafety Commission to look at. And then it's the same again for the years three and four with some ideas and years five and six. And then of course, you can look at these further resources. Uh, we also include Common Sense Media, Cyber Security Centre, Think You Know, Be Connected, and Grok Learning have uh, a number of resources as well. And I guess the last area that um, we're going to look at is the designing and digital solutions. Now, this is all very new information in here, uh, where we talk about what digital solutions are and uh, algorithms, visual programming, and then we have a task at the end. 
So if we have a look at the algorithm side of things, you may have had some experience using robotics in the past. And so what we've done here is we've tried to look at it from a thinking perspective. What does computational thinking look like? And we've broken that up into the areas of decomposing, abstracting, the pattern recognition and the algorithms. And so we go through what each of these means and you'll probably recognize the different aspects uh, as part of your teaching methodology as well. And there's some uh, references also to the uh, ACARA's Digital Technologies in Focus project and a lot of their resources as well. Then we're looking into plugged and unplugged ideas of algorithms because, again, you can do things with robotics uh, or, or, or other digital technology tools, or you could be doing things that are in an unplugged way, which is without a, an actual device, uh, but it gives the concepts and the understandings. Uh, and a lot of that work has been done by Tim Bell with his CS Unplugged uh, website uh, from the University of Canterbury. You notice here under classroom ideas for algorithms that foundation is missing and we've only got it from years one to six. And that's because there's no specific content description at the foundation level uh, around algorithms. So again, we encourage you to unlock these and have a look and see what sort of ideas uh, that are presented and work through some of the resources. We've also tried to incorporate some of our cultural responsive pedagogies in with our digital technologies. And so you'll see here that we're using this uh, emu foot string figure example that can show how we can be teaching uh, these unplugged algorithms through string games. Um, all right, and so I'll go down to... Just go down. Just yep. go... Oh, sorry. Just, no, just uh, the interactive, just go up a little bit. Something that sometimes people miss, miss is that um, in the key definitions, if you mouse over the plus sign, and click on it, it will come up with a bit more information. Sometimes they get missed, so there's some interactives in on different pages, so it's a good thing to be aware of. And it's the same for branching and pseudocode. If you're not sure what they mean, there's some explanations as well. Thanks, Celia. And then again, um, the Digital Technologies Hub have unpacked what algorithms look like. Uh, it's all related to version nine of the curriculum, and they've got that from foundation through to year six. And of course, at the end of each of our um, uh, modules, again, there's a task for you. So in this, in this particular module, there are four options for you to choose from. You might like to have a look at Scratch, and I'm not sure if you're very familiar with Scratch, but uh, that's a fabulous free resource where students can start to learn how to program using blocks. Or you might like to take up something on algorithms and write some clear um, instructions. Uh, you might like to share a classroom resource uh, or develop a user story. And each of those you, those are covered in the prior module before that. So there's a whole section on Scratch and a section on user stories as well. And we pop our replies in this section here. And then as you scroll down, you'll be able to see entries from other people. So Celia, have I left anything out? Um, just scroll through, I don't think so, except for the fact that you can do the, um, the course in any order you like after you've done the original, um, uh, after you've done the original survey. Um, but otherwise, no, and the, so the tasks are optional, but they are the way that you will complete the course if you want to get a certificate for it. All right, um, I'll switch back now to the presentation. Perfect. I'm not sure if I'll stop sharing to do that. Oh, there we go. In the meanwhile, if anyone's got any questions, because we, we know we're doing a super speedy session, if anyone's got any questions that you feel like we haven't covered yet, we're going to show you a few more resources. But if you've got any particular questions that you'd like answered 
um, pop them in the chat. Um, did that work? Nope, you're still back on the course. How about that? Yes, but you need to change this display oh. setting. Oh, I see, because I shared the wrong one. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Um, all right. So do you want to share about this one? Yeah, sure. So um, throughout the course, um, often at the bottom of the pages, you see we have also scattered through a number of resources that have been put together by CESA along with Refraction Media, the people who write C um, careers in STEM. Um, and we have um, created these uh, downloadable PDF forms, that are pages that you could use as a literacy task if you wanted some uh, STEM-based literacy task in your classroom. Um, and they, they're there for you, however you'd like to use them. They'd be great as a simple reading task. Um, and they all link to the Careers with STEM website as well. And we also have some, so they were career profiles. We also have a few case studies as well um, scattered throughout the course downloadable and you can choose how to use them. So our question was, do, is it recommended to do the MOOC before the X plus X? It would depend on your level of experience um, and your knowledge about the new curriculum. Um, it would probably make sense to at least browse it. It's, it's free after all, so you can easily just browse it and have a look um, and take in what you need to do. Um, it, it wouldn't hurt to register for them both at the same time and just dip in and out of the parts that interest you. The purpose of these is to provide you with information that you need at your point you, is provided at your point of need, so not to spend time with that's unnecessary. And on the screen, I've just popped up the digital plus X, so you can see that the modules um, have the introduction, uh, then the digital technologies plus sustainability, uh, then you have digital technologies plus maths, and then another module which is plus English. Um, and then you've got your community hive. And I think I forgot to show the community hive in the decoding one today. So um, um, we will be doing another session in a few weeks on this, on the whole digital technologies course. But I could also just pop in a link to a video that Rebecca Vivian has produced that summarises um, this, that the DT plus X course in the world. I'll pop that into the chat now. That's so, the next video. So we're just about on the hour of four o'clock. Um, for me, it's four o'clock. Uh, <laughs> Five thirty for other people in the world, yes, and maybe earlier for others. But um, look, we'd really appreciate your feedback on um, our short session today. If you could scan that uh, QR code on the screen, or Celia, if you can put the um, link to the Ooh. form in the chat uh, and if people could just spend uh, a couple of these last couple of minutes um, just filling in that feedback form that would be really useful for us as well. Um, I'm just checking for other questions. Yeah, or, questions. Otherwise Sue maybe just pop onto the next slide for a moment and then we can start recording. So uh, if you'd like to um, follow us we're on X previously known as Twitter um, and our has hashtag is the Caesar STEM PL uh, or Caesar at Adelaide. Or you can have a look at our website, caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au and um, contact us at caesar at adelaide.edu.au. And thank you joining, for joining us today.